So number one then, from the second paper of this new hire, and this is the specimen paper. There's a square base pyramid, it says, of side 60 units. The coordinates of D, since it's a right square base pyramid, meaning the top's directly above the centre of the base, so its coordinates will be 30, 30, and it says it's 80 up. E is the midpoint, and F divides AB in the ratio of 2 to 1. First part, find the coordinates of E and F. Well, it'll actually be easier to get F first, maybe, because F divides AB, and I know that A is 60 along, so B would be 60 back, and F, since it's in the ratio of 2 to 1, is 2 thirds of the way along 60, so that'll be 40. So to get to F, it'll be go along 60, go back 40, that's 2 thirds of the 60, and don't go up at all. Now, E. E is the midpoint of a side. So the best thing to do is just get the coordinates of the end points and go halfway between them. So there's B again, 60, 60, but 0. So E simply halfway between them. Halfway between 30 and 60, that's 45. Halfway between 30 and 60, that's 45. Halfway between 80 and 0, that's 40. So part B. Now part B doesn't just say calculate the components of ED and the components of EF. It says find the scalar product of these two, still just for two marks. Well, that means there's only the one mark for getting the components of ED and getting the components of EF. Now, if that's the case, so like just, they're only just like, what, half a mark each, but though you don't get half marks, you'd as well just doing it simply. How do you get from E to D? How do you get from 45 to 30? You go back 15. How do you get from 45 to 30 for the Y components? You go back 15. How do you get from 40 to 80 for the Z components? That's forward 40. Same with EF. How do you get from 45 to 60? That's forward 15. 45 to 40, that's back 5. 40 to 0, that's back 40. No, it's only one mark for the pair of them. If you want to spend the time setting it all out the way that you're used to, saying, well, ED will be the position vector of D minus the position vector of E, and then write them all out again. D was 30, 30, 80. 30, 30, 80. E was 45, 45, 40. 45, 45, 40. Now let's do the subtraction. 30 take away 45, negative 15. 30 take away 45, negative 15. 80 take away 40, 40. For the same result, obviously. But the point is, it's only worth one mark. You're going to write all this down for one mark. It takes far too long just for the one mark. You could just stick with that. Right, so what's the scalar product then? ED times EF. The scalar product. ED dot EF. Multiply the corresponding components and add them to a single number, a scalar. Corresponding components, negative 15 times 15. Why components? Negative 15 times negative 5. Z components, 40 times negative 40. Seems to have unnecessarily large numbers in this problem. They could have been divided by 10 easily, or 5 at least. Right, what have we got? Well, 15 15s are 2 2 5, so it's negative 2 2 5. At least this bit's positive. 5 15s are 75. Back to negative again. 16 0 0. So 75 onto that brings it back to negative 150. So altogether it'll be negative 1 7 50. That was quite a lot just for two marks. A lot of arithmetic. Now, part C, hence, or otherwise, calculate the size of angle D, E, F. Well, they've already forced you along the hence route by asking you to work out this scalar product E, D, dot E, F. The information's over here. So angle D, E, F is this angle on this triangular face that's facing us. And to work that out using the scalar product, you need the vectors that radiate from the vertex of the angle. That would be ED and DF, but that's just what you worked out in the first parts.
so it means we could jump straight in with the cosine of, and it's the angle DEF, would be the vectors that radiate away, that's EF dot ED, the scalar product, which we've already worked out, divided by the lengths of them, their magnitudes. So there's one mark for knowing this, that rearrangement of the scalar product. The scalar product can be worked out with the components, or the scalar product is the length times the length times the cosine. So you can isolate the cosine by dividing by the two magnitudes. Now you could work them out separately, I suppose that's already been worked out separately. Usually I just put it all down, so all the arithmetic's paralleling itself. But here maybe I could just work them out separately. What are these magnitudes? Well, what's the magnitude of EF? It'll be the square root of the components. EF is 15, 5 and 40. 15 squared, negative 5 squared and 40 squared. Whoops, that should be negative 40. So that's 225 plus 25 plus 1600. So that's 250 onto 1600, 1850. Ridiculous numbers. And what about ED? Same thing, the square root of the components. Now ED was negative 15 squared. Not that the negatives matter particularly, negative 15 squared and 40 squared, because when you square it, it's going to be positive. So there's a 225, and another 225, and another 1600. So that'll be 450, and 16 is 2050. The square root of 2050. So the marks for these two. And then let's just pop it all in. I've gone a bit squint now. So that was negative 1750 over root 1850 root 2050. I'm not going to bother working that out. We'll just get angle DEF by just doing the inverse cos of that. Inverse cos of this thing. Negative 1750 over the square root of those two numbers. 1850 times 2050. And when you take that all in, you get 153.977 and so on. So we'll call that 154.0 degrees for angle D, E, F. Now, it did say hence or otherwise. You were kind of forced into the hence because you had to work out the scalar product anyway. But there is the other way, which is just to consider the triangle that contains D, E and F. Because you know the lengths, or you can work out the lengths of the three sides of that triangle. You've already got part of the answers. I've got the components of ED, so I can get its length. I've got the components of EF, so I can get its length. And I can work out the components of DF. But that'll be new, so I'll have to work that out myself. Well, what's df? 30 to 60 is 30. 30 to 40 is only 10. And 80 to 0 is negative 80. Now I know all three components for the sides, so you can work out the lengths of the sides. If I'm just considering a triangle, I could scale the sides down and still maintain the sizes of the angles. So I could say that that would be equivalent to, unfortunately I've got fives in them, but at least I could divide them by five. That would be the same as six, two, and negative 16. Similarly, ED would be equivalent to negative three, negative three, eight. And EF would be equivalent to three, negative one, negative eight. I could use the scaled down sides and now work out the lengths for this triangle here. So what would I have using these simpler numbers? Well, what's the length of DF in my scaled down size? That would be the square root of 6 squared and 2 squared and negative 16 squared. So that's 256, 260, 296. What about the length of ED in the scaled down triangle? That would be negative 3. I could just really jump in with the numbers. Negative 3 squared, negative 3 squared, and 8 squared. I can hardly read this myself. So 
So it's 9 and 9 is 18. 18 on to 64 would be 82. And what's the length of EF? And my scale down one, that would be 3 squared and negative 1 squared and negative 8 squared. That's the square root of, well that's 9 and 1 is 10 and 64 is 74. So instead of using the scalar product, I can see I can work at that angle because I know these sides. This one is root 82, scaled down. It's actually five times that. This is root 74, scaled down. And this one's root 296. So what's the size of that angle? Well, the cosine of that angle, we'll just call it E, is, remember the way it works, cosine rule? Square these two sides. Well, that's easy. I'll just go back to 84 and 72. Take away the square of that side. So just take away 296. Over two times the length of that, root 82, root 74. Well, that's 156. Away from that will be negative 140. The two will cancel that down to a negative 70 over the square root of 82, 74. No, that needs to do that because I can get that angle itself just from inverse cos of that. Inverse cos of negative 70 over the square root of 82 times 74. And no surprise, as before, it's 153.977 and so on. But that would be longer. There's a few more steps in that, especially with reducing these numbers. If you've got to work out another displacement, another length, and after all, you'd already worked out one of the three parts for using the scalar product in part B already. So you would be doing the hence. You wouldn't bother with this otherwise.